In this video, we're going to go over problem number one of the 1988 AP Physics C Electricity and Magnetism AP exam. It starts off, you have a isolated conducting sphere of radius A charged to potential V, and the part A is determine the charge on the sphere. So we know the equation for that. We know the equation for a spherically symmetric charge distribution. So that is, or at least the potential on a spherically symmetric charge distribution, that is KQ over R, where R is the radius of the spherically, well, your distance from it actually, but in this case, um, the radius of the object. And we're saying that it's charged to a potential V, which means that the potential at the surface is V equals KQ over A. So the amount of charge that is therefore on the sphere is isolated. You have Q equals AV over K. Notice that we needed to put things in terms of the variables given. In other words, just saying V equals KQ over R and being done with it and then solving for Q would not have worked because they told us that the radius of it was A and they told us the potential was V. So our answer needed to be in terms of the variables given. In terms of the points that they allotted for this, they gave two points for starting off with V equals KQ over R or V equals KQ over A. And or if you started off with V equals KQ over R, you needed to plug in that R was equal to A, so that was worth two points. And then one point for the final answer being Q equals AV over K. Now, part B says that now we surround the sphere with two hemispherical shells of inner radius B. They don't tell us the outer radius, turns out we don't need it. And those are grounded. This is important. Those are grounded. That means the potential there is zero. So by means of Gauss's law, determine the electric field in the space between the solid sphere and the shell at radius little r from the center. So in other words, we're talking about little r is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. So by means of Gauss's law, remember you got to use Gauss's law here, you're not allowed to use some other memorized equation, you get it by Gauss's law. We have that the contour, well the surface integral of E vector dot dA vector is the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. Well I know the enclosed charge, the enclosed charge is Q. And I know what Q is, I just calculated it in part A, that's AV over K. So now we know the right side of this. The left side, well the electric field vector is always parallel to any area element vector which just points directly outward from the sphere. So that E vector, dA vector is just E times dA, and E is constant, dA, this is spherically symmetric, so the E comes out, and the integral of dA is just 4 pi r squared. So now we have that E times 4 pi r squared is equal to AV over K over epsilon naught, and this K is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I did that so that I can cancel my epsilon naughts. And now we have a 4 pi AV left over. That's equal to E times 4 pi r squared. Well, the 4 pi's now cancel. So now, just getting our final answer in terms of everything, we have E equals AV over r squared. Now, where the points were distributed here? On part B, one point was given for writing out Gauss's law correctly in vector form. One point was given for evaluating that the left side is e times 4 pi r squared. One point was given for using the fact that the enclosed charge is equal to the charge of the sphere. And one point was given for the final answer. In other words, the, that third point was given for plugging in your answer for part a. And then one point for the final answer of av over r squared. Now, part C, determine the potential of the solid sphere relative to the ground. Ooh, this is a little bit different. I thought that the potential was just V. Well, apparently it's different because of the fact that now we have surrounded it with a hemispherical shell and grounded it. That changes things. So we need to recalculate this. Well, how do we do that? 
Well, we have just calculated the electric field vector, and we know the relationship between an electric potential difference and an electric field. It's the negative integral of E vector dot ds vector. Well, what is delta V? Well, here we want our delta V to be read as VA, the potential at the surface there, minus VB, the potential of the spherical shell. Well, we can calculate that. So that integral, that's just, since we're, we're integrating inward, we're going from r equals b to r equals a in order to get this delta v being va minus vb. We integrate inward from r equals b to r equals a. If we had wanted the something different, like if we had wanted vb minus va, then we would integrate from r equals a to r equals v, r, r equals b. And in this case, e times dr since we're going along the, the direction of that ds, so to speak. Now, some of you might want to stop me right here and say, well, isn't e vector pointed outward and ds going inward, so shouldn't that dot product end up giving us a negative sign? Well, yes, you're correct. That would end up giving a negative sign, but that would be under an integral from a to b. Well, we want the integral from b to a, so that ends up giving us another negative sign. So we feel like Spanish class suddenly, we're dealing with triple negatives, and two of those negatives cancel to give us this result down here. Another way of thinking of this is the fact that, hey, we're, we want to deal with a magnitude of e times dr, but going from r equals b to r equals a. In other words, you can think of that dot product with that cosine of 180 degrees itself as flipping the integration bounds. So in any case, we now plug in our e. It's a v over r squared. Ah, it is with respect to r, so we can't just pull this e out of here because this e is a function of r. We can pull the a v out, though. But anyway, integrating that, we get a minus a v over r, and that kills this other minus sign right here, going from r equals b to a, and evaluating that, we get v times 1 minus a over b. So that is delta v. Well, delta v, remember, was v of a minus v of b. We wanted v of a. That's all we wanted. We just wanted v of a. But v of b the potential at B is zero. Why? Because every conductor is an equipotential surface. If this thing is grounded, that means the ground has a potential of zero. This wire is attached to here, so every th part of the conductor that touches this, which is the whole shell, has a potential of zero. So that's why we got a zero here. So V of A is V times 1 minus A over B. And that's our final result. Where were the points awarded here? So they gave one point for writing the potential difference as that integral. They gave one point for correct limits going from r equals b to r equals a. They gave one point for plugging in the value of the electric field in the integral. They gave one point for a correct integration result. In other words, what we did right here. And then they gave one point for the final answer. So that is how these points were distributed. Next, part D, determine the capacitance of the system in terms of the given quantities and fundamental constants. So it always sounds like it's going to be hard when they're asking us to determine the capacitance of a system. Well, just use the definition of capacitance. The definition of capacitance is that capacitance is charge per unit voltage. So we have a spherical capacitor. Start with the definition of capacitance, charge per unit voltage. Well, that charge is just what we were calling little q, and that's AV over K. That potential difference is what we just calculated in part C, V times 1 minus A over B. It's always going to happen that whenever you're, determining, whenever you're deriving a capacitance expression, your Vs are going to cancel. You use the definition, which includes Vs, but when you plug in for your charge, that is also going to have a V in it when you plug things in properly, and that's going to cancel with the delta V, the V that you get from the delta V in the bottom. So the Vs cancel, and after rearranging things in math so that they look nice and pretty, we have C equals AB over K times B minus A. Where were the points given here? This part was only worth um, three points. So I shouldn't say only, I guess, but that's 
four points or four parts, so three points shouldn't be all that unusual. But one point was for using the definition of capacitance, writing it out. In other words, Q equals C delta V or C equals Q over delta V. One point was given for plugging in the expressions for Q and V, and one point was for getting the final expression C equals AB over K times B minus A. Although the way they wrote it was they said C equals 4 pi epsilon naught AB over B minus A, for those of you who like to put things in terms of epsilon naught. So that is the solution to problem number one from the 1988 AP Physics C Electricity and Magnetism AP exam. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.